Hello, my name is Flor. I'm a film director. I'm the director of the film Pink Moon that is selected for the inaugural edition of My Meta Stories. Pink Moon is my first feature debut. And it's a film about a father-daughter relationship, actually. It's about that a father during a family dinner announces that he wishes to die on his upcoming 75th birthday because he feels um, life has been good. It was, it's been enough. Like he wants to end it on the top. And then his daughter, Iris, the protagonist of the film, she is just not agreeing with it at all. She thinks it's the most stupid idea ever. So she um, goes against it and she um, doesn't want him to do it. She doesn't want to live without her father. So the story continues. It's a sort of road trip between the father and daughter and how she tries to convince him to stay alive, actually. Nou, hoe is dat voor jullie? Ik vond deze wel goed gaan. Ja. En wat zou ik weer het eerste dat we moeten doen als we je in de ochtend vinden? Nou, heel belangrijk is dat we zeker weten dat papa dood is. Dat we hem niet aanraken. Dan bellen we de huisarts en die belt vervolgens de politie. Wat vind jij? Ik heb zin in een biertje. Ik wilde een film maken over een vader-daughter relationship. En wat als je vader niet ziek of dying suddenly, maar hij wil niet to die. Like, hoe do je respond to dat? En wat do you want to get out of that relationship? Um, so this was the starting point and um, because it's my first feature uh, and I don't really have a background in like narrative storytelling, I wanted to collaborate with a writer and that's how I met Bastian Kroeger, the co-writer of the film. We got together and we immediately clicked because of the sort of relationship we both have with our fathers. Like um, they are both very much of this generation of fathers in the Netherlands that have been told that emotions are not something that a father shows. Bastian truly is the writer, so he wrote it, but we very much developed the film through discussing it and really getting to know each other and like diving into each other's lives. The theme of like assisted suicide or wanting to die is a very heavy theme that can be very like uh, choking almost. So it was also very important for us that I think like confronted with death, it wants uh, it creates life or the, the the need to feel alive, I think. So it was very important for us from the beginning that this would not be only like a super heavy film, but that we used like humor and sort of lightness of tone, that it is a story that can grasp a large audience in that sense. Hi. Wij zijn heel geïnteresseerd in het huis. Het staat koop, toch? Ja, 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 ja. ja. Dit is mijn vader, Jan. Hij gaat hier sterven op 28 november. In the Netherlands, if you go to a funeral, it's very stiff and very strict, but people also are very awkward. They don't know how to behave very well, um, which sometimes leads to very like absurd comedy moments somehow. In the Netherlands, that we tend to look away from difficult subjects, from death, from like sickness. Like it's uh, it's easier to look the other way than to truly have uh, um, a conversation about it. So. Of course, as a director, you have the power. If people are in the cinema, you have them there for 90 minutes in the dark. So to make this sort of epic last 50 minutes shot uh, that you are there with Iris to live through it was very much something that we aimed for, that you cannot escape it somehow. Pop! Gaan we dit echt allemaal ineens doen? Is het allemaal normaal ineens? Kan het niet. Waarom doe je dit? Om jou te zijn, Poe. Je moet me laten gaan, Iris. Jij staat zo vol in het leven. Dat jij nooit zou kunnen voelen zoals ik het nu doe. Leg me maar uit. For me, I thought like the scene in the mountains where they sit under the tree and they sort of have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation. That's the moment she realizes there's there's no point of return, right? It will happen. And um 
I think everything has been said at one moment. Like there's no more words you can use to express anything. So for me, it was very important. Like she tries, she tries to convince him to not do it, to not die, to not leave her. She tries to understand it in every possible way. And at one point, um, there's no more words. There's no nothing more to say or to ask. Um, so it was very important that the last scene was very much uh, like, um, how do you say, a non-verbal, like you have to experience it. Um, and that's when we came up with the dance, I think as well, like this very moment of, com it's very small coming together. Uh, yeah. And I think it's the, the close, like, because, yeah, it's the closest they will ever be somehow, I think. Uh, and that's the true, like, if, for me, underneath it all, it's like, if you truly dare to go through the uncomfortableness, and if you really choose to connect and have a discussion, uh, then you can have a true connection. And that's what the dance is about, I think. And the brother, is, for instance, is also close to his dad, but in a very different way. And in the end... Yeah, he has a very different way of connecting, I think. But it was very much like everything has been said. So what can you do? You can only be there. Well, I think it's very good to experiment with that because, I mean, as you meant, like young audiences, how do you get them to the cinema, right? And I think gaming like that's a huge thing for young people and now that you already see that there's games that they're playing that games that are originally games and then turned into series or cinema so it works both ways somehow which is very interesting i think that these worlds more and more collide so yeah i'm very curious to see what happens like um if you put it like cinema and minecraft or other games if that um interests people because more and more I think also because the games become more and more cinematic and creative in a way I think we sometimes underestimate the young audiences that they very much like actually art house cinema and experimental cinema and it all like there's a reappreciation almost I think of uh, cinema variété and all these kind of things like un unknowingly but um, there's hope in that I think yeah so I think it's very smart if you try to reach an audience through their is different mediums i think yeah and hopefully in that sense they come like to reappreciate cinema and that actually with that comes also the reappreciation of going to the cinema to watch it on the big screen i think yeah young audiences are very much liking that mm -hmm.